Our laboratory has found that hair follicle stem cells can not only reproduce the hair, but have a great multipotency to make many other kinds of cells, such as nerves. This presentation is going to be how hair follicle stem cells can be used for nerve regeneration and spinal cord re regeneration. The hair follicle cycles throughout the lifetime of every mammal. The hair grows, goes through a growing stage and a resting stage. When the hair follicle regenerates and produces a new hair shaft, the stem cells of the hair follicle regenerate the bottom part of the follicle. The stem cells of the follicle are located in a particular location in the hair follicle called the bulge. We have found in special mice that the stem cells of the hair follicle contain a stem cell protein called nestin. This very same protein is also found in nerve stem cells. In the special mice that we worked with, the gene for green fluorescent protein is linked to the nestin gene so that in these mice, the hair follicle stem cells glow green when excited by blue light. We can see in this slide how the green fluorescent protein or GFP expressing hair follicle stem cells produce the hair follicle throughout the cycle of the follicle. This slide shows a higher magnification of the hair follicle stem cells located at the bulge area of the hair follicle. The hair follicle stem cells glow green here because the nestin stem cell protein that they contain is linked to the green fluorescent protein that has been engineered into special mice such that every time the nestin protein is expressed, so is the green fluorescent protein. We can see the beautiful structure of these hair follicle stem cells, especially in A3, where we see many very interesting processes emanating from the bulb area of the cell. This slide shows the beginning of antigen or the growth phase of the hair follicle. We can see the hair follicle stem cells expressing green fluorescent protein and glowing green start to form cells that are the beginning of the new hair follicle. The hair follicles are interconnected by structures that also express nestin, as we can see in this slide, since nestin drives the expression of green fluorescent protein. Every hair follicle seems interconnected at the area of their stem cells at the bulge location by these fluorescent structures, which we have later found to be blood vessels. When hair follicles are transplanted to other mice, they start to form blood vessels, as we can see in this slide. These blood vessels are projected into the skin where their hair follicle has been transplanted. The blood vessels express GFP, meaning that they also express the stem cell protein nestin. Hair follicle stem cells were isolated from the giant whisker or vibrissa hair follicle of the mouse. The isolated hair follicles were, were then put into a culture dish where they formed a sphere. The hair follicle stem cells in the sphere in culture continued to express nestin since they were also expressing green fluorescent protein. When analyzed for stem cell related protein expression, we found that the growing spheres 
derived from the hair follicle stem cells express the gene CD34, which is also a stem cell protein. However, these stem cells did not express keratin-15, which is very important in the hair follicle, and also did not express the beta-3 tubulin protein, which is diagnostic of neurons, or the CD31 protein, which is diagnostic of endothelial cells that form blood vessels. However, when the hair follicle-derived spheres were put into differentiation medium that contained fetal bovine serum, they began to form neurons. We saw this because not only do the cells look like neurons, but they expressed beta-3 tubulin, which is diagnostic of neurons. The differentiating hair follicle stem cells in culture also formed keratin-15 expressing cells, which, which are diagnostic of keratinocytes that are present in the hair follicle. The hair follicle stem cells also formed astrocytes since they expressed GFAP, which is a marker of astrocytes. Smooth muscle cells were also formed by the hair follicle stem cells in culture since they expressed smooth muscle actin, a marker of smooth muscles. Melanocytes, the cells that form the pigment of the hair, were also formed from the hair follicle stem cells in culture. We could see that these melanocytes form the pigment granule containing melanin. We then looked at the percentage of cells formed by the hair follicle stem cells in culture. Neurons were most frequently formed, followed by glial cells and keratinocytes. Occasionally, smooth muscle cells and melanocytes were also formed. When the spheres that were formed from hair follicle stem cells in culture were injected in the skin of mice, they formed neurons. We confirmed that these cells in the skin were neurons by their expression of beta-3 tubulin. We then wanted to see if the cultured hair follicle stem cells could be used to regenerate a severed nerve. The sciatic nerve in mice was severed and the cultured hair follicle stem cells were injected into the area of the severed nerve. After a period of about two months, the nerve rejoined and in the area of rejoining, we could see the green fluorescent protein expressing hair follicle stem cells. Upon further analysis, we found that the hair follicle stem cells had mostly differentiated into Schwann cells, which form myelin sheaths in the area where the nerve was rejoined. We confirmed that the GFP expressing cells were Schwann cells by their expression of GFAP. It appears that these newly formed Schwann cells produced myelin sheaths which surrounded axons, perhaps letting the axons grow and rejoin the severed nerve. We then looked at the different types of cells formed by the hair follicle stem cells in the rejoining sciatic nerve. Unlike cultured hair follicle stem cells, where neurons were most prominent, in the rejoining nerve, most of the hair follicle stem cells differentiated into Schwann cells. We then wanted to test the function of the rejoined nerve and asked whether electrical stimulation 
could cause the gastrocnemius muscle to twitch, the gastrocnemius muscle, muscle being innervated by the sciatic nerve. We found, indeed, electrical stimulation of the rejoined nerve caused the gastrocnemius muscle to contract. In this movie, we electrically stimulated the untreated severed nerve and found that the gastrocnemius muscle did not contract. In this movie, we electrically stimulated the nerve that had been transplanted with hair follicle stem cells and allowed to rejoin. We can see that the electrical stimulation caused the gastrocnemius muscle to contract, demonstrating that the rejoined nerve had regained its function. We quantified the degree of contraction by the gastrocnemius muscle after elect electrical stimulation. We can see that both four weeks after transplantation and eight weeks after transplantation, the gastrocnemius muscle contracted much more than the controls where the nerve remained severed and was not treated with hair follicle stem cells. The stars mean statistically significant data. We then asked if the hair follicle stem cells could rejoin the severed spinal cord. We severed the spinal cord of mice in the thoracic region and then inject the severed region with hair follicle stem cells. We found that the spinal cord rejoined and in the rejoined area we could see the GFP expressing hair follicle stem cells. In this movie we see a mouse in which the spinal cord was severed but was not treated with hair follicle stem cells. The mouse has lost the, fu the function of its rear legs. In this movie we see a mouse in which the hair follicle stem cells were injected into the severed spinal cord. We can see that the mouse has mostly regained function in its rear legs. Conclusion. Hair follicle stem cells can differentiate into many types of cells both found in the hair follicle and not found in the hair follicle. Importantly, these types of cells include neurons and glial cells which can be very useful for regenerative medicine. We have found that the transplanted hair follicle stem cells can functionally rejoin the severed peripheral nerve in mice. Transplanted hair follicle stem cells can also functionally rejoin the severed spinal cord in mice. These data suggest that hair follicle stem cells have potential to treat peripheral nerve and spinal cord injuries. In the future, we will see if hair follicle stem cells can treat degenerative processes in the brain, such as Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease.